Hello, my friends, and welcome to MB Shoe Doc, where we take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. We will be covering the art of patina and shine and learn to breathe new life into old shoes. So grab your dyes and polishes and get ready to get your hands dirty. And let's dive right into today's project. And I have another pair of Sutor Montalassi uh, Italian shoes here to do a custom patina on. If you remember the other pair, these red and now looking more like pink monsters. Um, so yeah, I got two pairs of these. So we're gonna get these uh, unlaced and stripped and I'm gonna see if we can do some custom work on them. Got the sexy gloves on. Got the acetone, it's stripping time. Let's see what we can take off of these. Yeah, you can see some color coming off there. Should strip pretty easily. It has been stripped and it is gonna be a blue and brown patina. I've never tried anything quite like this before uh, should be fun. So the different sections are gonna be different colors. I'll do blue here on the kind of wingtip area and on the side, but the toe here and the heel cap are all gonna be in brown. So I'm gonna start with just this really light blue, this turquoise color from Fibing. What you'll find with a light tan like this is when you apply blue, it's gonna to tend to be a little bit green. So uh, I would not be surprised if this comes up looking just a little bit greenish to start. That's okay. Get a little bit of turquoise here. And I'm just gonna to try to be careful to... Just get a little bit of a base coloration on this. figure this first little bit would come across kind of green, so it doesn't surprise me at all. I'm looking to do more of a marbled pattern, so just kind of outlining it a little bit first. I'll kind of dab at it to get this marbled patina to it. And of course I'll be doing multiple layers, going darker and darker. This is just to try to get this first kind of really light blue base coat on it which as I said, does come out looking a little bit more uh, green. Got the first little bit of blue added. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of brown here. So I'm gonna use this Havana. Fear Havana, which is kind of a nice mid-brown color. And first I'm gonna kind of get the border of this. Kind of tracing the, the border, then I can get a little bit, um, get a little bit more pattern going, dabbing, but I'm just trying to avoid going from the one section into the next as much as possible. Which is kind of hard to control completely. My plan is, you know, there's gonna be a little area of a uh, tiny bit of overlap. I'm gonna go really, really dark, kind of navy blue in those areas, almost black. And then right on the very edge of the brown, try to go a really, really dark brown as well. So. 
hopefully that will, will transition well. And again, I'm wanting kind of a marbled patina look here. So I'm kind of doing dabs with the brush here. Get a nice variation in the, the pattern. admit I'm not really in love with the way the coloration looks right now um, but again I think after we get layer upon layer um, and get this blue a little bit uh, darker uh, and start adding some burnishing it's going to look much nicer so gives you an idea of what uh, what we're kind of going for um, but yeah definitely want this more blue less green get some dark burnishing on here. Uh, I think we'll have a good result. I'm gonna do just a little bit more here with this Havana. I'm gonna go ahead and go along the, the welt here. Get any of that stitching. Darken it up slightly. I'm taking a little bit of this Angelus navy blue. And just gonna darken up, accent this stitch line here. So this is more the, the coloration that I'm going to want. Definitely more of a true blue. So I went a little bit with some darker brown on the toe here, a little bit darker blue along this edge. Still not quite uh, satisfied with this border. So I really want pure black. It should darken up the blue and darken up the brown both without changing the, the tone. Just really want to add the darkness. It's still too saturated. So I need a pretty dry uh, brush for the black here. If it's a little bit too wet, you can go along an edge like this that I want to darken considerably. And then after it's dried off a little bit, I can go on some of these borders. Man, that is still too wet. And really just go along all the edges here with this. Darken up everything equally. Overall, really pretty happy with the dye work on this pair. Don't really think there's too much uh, left that I'm looking to add. I'm just gonna go over the blue just a little bit with this uh, cream polish. This is by Boot Black, and we're just trying to accent the blue just a little bit more. You know, still kind of that uh, greenish undertone in some areas. And I'm thinking that this might just help to eliminate a little bit of that, you know, just a little bit more of a, a true blue in some areas. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit of this cream polish here. I'm gonna use a little bit of the Boot Black here, cream polish on these brown areas too. Again, this just helps to smooth things out, seal in the color. And adds a little bit of shine to it as well. Getting really close to completion now. It's time to use some Big Four conditioning lotion here. So any dye that 
is unabsorbed and did not penetrate the leather, this will remove that. And so uh, you can see just a little bit of coloration coming off here. That's usually going to be the case. That there's always just a little bit of unabsorbed uh, dye typically with any patina job. And so anything like that, we want to go ahead and get it off so it doesn't rub off onto your clothes or anything like that. So not only that, but the whole stripping and, and dyeing process does dry out the leather a little bit too. So this is reconditioning it and removing the unabsorbed surface dye. So we'll do both shoes. In this case, I am going to go over the blue area first and use the same section of cloth on that and then go over the brown because I'm really trying to avoid uh, the colors bleeding into each other because that's going to make kind of a greenish hue. So we'll do the blue areas first and then I'll use another area of the cloth to concentrate on reconditioning the, the brown areas. So they've been reconditioned. Got some cream polish on them. Just time to brush them off and give them their final shine and they're ready to go. So last I'm gonna do a little bit of Saphir Mirror Gloss. This is in dark brown. Just so I can kind of accent the, the toe just a little bit. Darken it up maybe just a slight bit. So just trying to get a couple little top layers like this. Just enough to fill in and cover up the pores in the leather. And then it'll really shine right up. All right, so I'm using this little water dispenser here from this, uh, from this is from Shoe Care Shop. That's where I get a lot of my products. And then I'm using this Carmina wax. I have just loved this as a finishing wax. It's got a little bit more solvents in it, so it kind of melts this top layer of, of wax here and really brings out that mirror shine. So I just got a little tiny dab of wax, a little drop of water here, and just buffing. Not using much pressure at all. Really wanting to smooth the top layer, not really needing to add too much more wax and not needing to push it into the pores. That's already been done. All right, so here we are. Finished up, shined up with a custom patina. Check out the shine on these. Very fun project, really happy with the outcome. But still a uh, beautiful shoe. Love this uh, Norwegian style uh, stitching here and the hidden stitch wingtip designs. So a really pretty cool, uh, very cool shoe overall. So Sutor Mantelassi with a custom patina. Hope you enjoyed this project. Plenty more to come. Please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you on the next one.